and Waves 2.0, I mean, what do you want to do with this platform in the next two years? And what is it, what is it, what's going to be the real functionality of your platform? Will it be more around DeFi? Will it be the NFT product? Will it be in the metaverse? What do you think it will be? Yeah, so I, I'm thinking about scalability and, and I'm trying to, uh, you know, uh, explore other directions because this is what we have always, always been trying to do. We have been trying to, uh, like, be different, you know, to try something else. Uh, I think it's quite important not to replicate what other projects do. Uh, and we always had our own paths, uh, like, as I mentioned, for example, our DEX, it, like, it, it has uh, been there for five years already. And it was like uh, a very different DEX from the beginning because we had like order books there like for five years already. Not so well known, maybe it will be. Uh, so now for me, it's quite important to uh, try and uh, use other approaches to scalability uh, because everybody's trying to do sharding now. And I don't believe in sharding. I think there is a very like deep fundamental problems with it. Uh, there is like a lot, lot of problems with like inter shard communication, and eventually you have the same problem that you have like with like current blockchains you know, when you have like too much transactions between different shards. Uh, you're back to the same problem, and it's very hard to resolve. It. So I think there can be different approaches. We are like trying different things now, and uh, ways 2.0 won't be based on sharding as Ethereum uh, claims uh, to be based on in future, I think it's not going to happen actually. And they're very slow with it because there's a lot of engineering problems with it. And uh, when you have very hard engineering problems, you start to think maybe your like basic approach is wrong. So this is what is happening with Ethereum 2.0. I think they have too many engineering problems uh, and it's, nobody knows when they're able to resolve it. Will they resolve so, it? I, Will they resolve it? I, I'm not, not so sure because see, I, I think it's just wrong. You know, when you have so many issues, because it's doable in a way, but it's not going to be like nice. You know, so the setup will be kind of weird, and they're taking too much time with it. And you can understand that they don't really know what to do. Probably. Apparently, so. the merge is happening in September. The greedy bankers are about to do it again. In 2008, they crashed our financial system and nearly bankrupted the entire global economy. Then they received trillions of dollars in government bailouts. And after, they demanded fat bonuses paid for by you, the taxpayer. It turns out the banks haven't just been screwing the American taxpayers, they're also screwing over their investors. Turns out uh, the banking industry is the worst place you could put your money, despite enormous taxpayer bailouts. Now the bankers are back to take away your financial freedom. They lie and tell you that cryptocurrency isn't safe. They try to make it illegal for you to choose how to invest your hard-earned money. They lie and say cryptocurrency is used by money launderers and criminals. But look at the record. It's the banks themselves that launder hundreds of billions of dollars every year to the biggest criminal operations in the world. Leaked documents have revealed how some UK banks have helped criminals, money launderers and Russians under sanctions. American authorities discovered that the Sinaloa cartel moved $881 million through HSBC accounts as bank officials turned a blind eye to the illegality. The bankers lie and say cryptocurrency is not a real investment. Meanwhile, the smartest CEOs in the world are buying billions and billions of it. The truth is that banks lie about cryptocurrency because it makes them scared. The banks take $9 trillion per year of your hard-earned money, and they are worried that they will finally be exposed. They're scared because crypto means they can no longer control your money, which means they can no longer control you. They are scared because you might actually understand your money and intelligently decide what to do with it. Now is the time for us to come together, 
fight back and take control. It's time to educate ourselves, our families, and our communities. Because financial education means financial freedom. We know that cryptocurrencies will help us build the new decentralized financial system of the future. A banking system that is of the people, by the people, and for the people. A banking system where access to finance is a fundamental human right. A banking system that is free and fair and welcomes all humans on this earth. The DeFi revolution is happening. We, the people, can no longer be fooled. We choose to take control of our finances. We choose to take control of our freedom. We choose to take control of our future. Join us and let's take back our financial freedom forever. Which I know is just, yeah, yeah. It's just one of the, one of the things that has to happen before proof of stake but apparently yeah, it's some... basically proof of stake it's not sharding it's proof of stake so it's like it's different we have proof of stake since the beginning you know so uh for ethereum it's a, like it's a great milestone for us we had from the beginning you know so uh, but it's not sharding it's not scalability it's just proof of stake basically don't you because and and it will uh it will uh actually be combined with current proof of work there's going to be proof of stake on ethereum proof of work uh so we try to do something else uh, try to like uh, create some different approaches to scalability uh soon i think we're gonna publish uh, a white paper and because i wanted to do sharding i like probably uh had been thinking about it maybe for like half a year and i came uh to a conclusion that uh there could be uh better approaches to scalability uh that we can pursue now so this is what I'm trying to do. And for me, it's very important to create a platform uh, which can like support thousands of transactions per second, because I think this is what prevents us from uh, mass adoption, basically. You know, it's not like even price manipulation. No, we don't have a very good technology yet because it can't support too many transactions and uh, it can support very basic transactions. So it's you basically you trade some coins, <clears throat> And you're, you basically don't have any more capacity on your blockchain. So you just use up all your like capacity, uh, all your bandwidth for some trades, you know, so, and that's it. You paid like, I don't know, like $20 for a trade on Ethereum. And you understand that probably all other applications like DAO applications just don't have enough space on Ethereum now, you know? So we have to have a very cheap and a very fast platforms to do to do more, you know, with with blockchains. So this is very important. So if we have a blockchain that can process like ten thousand transactions per second, at least, you know, without like uh, going down, uh, without uh, like outages, uh, I think we won't be so like susceptible to manipulations, and there's going to be so many different applications on the blockchain so that we don't have now and uh, it's not going to be only about trading only about like monetary applications it's going to be about so many different things you know, like arts governance whatever so we have to work on the scalability and this will resolve all the issues that we have 